Welcome back to Igniting Inspiration. Um, this is our second episode and we are highlighting a kindergarten uh, common planning time. I wanted to share a little bit about how this came to fruition and why we decided to record this. So Kayla invited me into her classroom uh, earlier this year to see some math lessons uh, and she just knocked uh, the, the lessons out of the park. They were just really engaging for the kids and the kids were learning. And it was pretty clear that uh, Kayla has done her homework on best practices and how to uh, instruct for math. Um, so she, we, I watched that lesson um, and then later on I, I did an evaluation on her and she also chose math and once again it was clear that she had done a lot of preparation, a lot of planning and had read a lot of research about best practices and I saw just great instruction in her classroom. Um, so with that in mind, I, I asked her about her planning and she shared all of her documents and I asked her if she would be comfortable sharing this with the kindergarten team and we could make this into a, a common planning uh, format. Um, that way all of the teachers are, are kind of understanding best math practices and how to get our kids to, to understand the concepts and math that we wanted to. And what came out of it was just something incredible. Um, and you're going to see that in this video. These five teachers are, are acting as one in understanding what they would like their kids to learn. Uh, it's just a really strong practice that, as a principal, I, I hope to share with the rest of my staff. Um, they're, they have a common vision and they're able to collaborate and. Um, come up with goals and I can statements and break down those standards to really understand what they want their kindergartners to learn and the students are ultimately going to learn because of that. Uh, I, I think Kayla does a tremendous job of um, leading the team in this and I think this is a, a great start to kind of look at common plan time uh, across any subject. Uh, they just happen to be kind of focusing on math in this video. So looking at the, uh, the next steps for planning, um, when we look at the, this planning, they're doing a lot of planning for tomorrow. Uh, they're looking at the unit ahead and they're deciding exactly what they want to teach, when they want to teach, how they want to teach it. I think the next step is once that planning is done and they have some time to really look at what their students are doing in math, to get a good understanding of how their instruction is coming across to the kids and what the kids are learning. Um, I think we always need to ask ourselves in planning is uh, what do we want our kids to know and how do we know they learned it? And um, that's probably their next step is, is to look at how do we know our kids learn the material we intended for them to learn. You'll be seeing us starting to unpack standards for our next unit, which will be addition. So we're going to be looking through the standards and the academic vocabulary and what we think would be best for students to start with at a most basic skill level to build that foundation for them to be successful in addition. So, well, by the end of Unit 5, we know we need to have students um, just looking at the standards fluently add and subtract within 5. So I'm looking at the top of that Unit 5 document we created. So that last standard, the KOA5, is to fluently add and subtract. So that's just seeing the numeral and being able to complete those um, computations. Mm -hmm. And to represent addition with manipulatives um, with sums up to 10. So to start to get them there, we want to start in a more concrete way. So actually allowing our students to kind of touch and move manipulatives and then progress them to that abstract stage. Mm -hmm. And then I know last time we planned the fourth unit, what seemed to work well for us was looking at the academic vocabulary mm -hmm. and just kind of thinking what's important and how can we incorporate that into our mini lessons. So does anyone have any ideas about the vocabulary? What if we, for the first lesson, join and put together manipulatives? I like that. Mm -hmm. We usually always start with an anchor chart. An anchor chart? Mm -hmm. And then what is it? What kind of anchor and charts? Addition. And the addition. And so the let addition. me make a note of that. So I'll make a note that we can make an anchor chart for a mini lesson. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good place for uh, adding some of that vocabulary. Plus sign equal to. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, adding it for the, adding to it the whole unit. Even. Right. So even if yeah. we just start with the join and put together and then we can incorporate more into the anchor chart as we go to introduce the vocabulary. 
-hmm. Do we want to, before we jump there, to um, just go ahead and break <coughs> this unit in half because mm -hmm. the standards are addition and subtraction and it's right, just it's addition just addition, half. right? The Even standards, so, mm -hmm. okay, right? Because we'll hit the rest of the subtraction um, yes. standards in unit seven. But I see what you're saying, I, Janet. The standard reads yeah. addition and right, subtraction, right? Exactly, because it's just so, the computation operation standards. So it kind of just lumps them together. So mm -hmm. we'll just be focusing on the addition side of the standard for this unit, and we'll, do, we'll okay. complete the subtraction side for the next um, unit seven. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. No, you're right, though. I see that. On that head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looking at this, though, I'm thinking maybe we should move the anchor chart down. Like, I would like to do a mini lesson because okay. really we're supposed to not tell them what we're doing. Right, so I see. I would like to do a mini mm -hmm. lesson first of just giving them, like, verbal word problems or mm -hmm. saying, like, I had three cookies, and my friend gave me two more. How many cookies do I have? And right, and actually kind of representing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so something that's been helpful for me is to do um, to start out by using students instead of like, like I have three stuff. cookies. Mm -hmm. Were right. like my guys need to start a little bit more. Like I think so of where like we are in front of us. These three students are in the room, and yeah. then someone else comes in. How many students are in the room now? I know, and, and then they like, like that, right? Yeah, and actually coming up in front of the class. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm yeah. Engaged in that too. So mm -hmm. for or just like oral word problems, like story problems. Right, <clears throat> right. Just kind of those open ones where it's mm -hmm. not explicitly addition yet, but it's building that concept for them. Mm -hmm. So the I can, if you want to plug that in for the mini lesson. Sure. Um, I mean, I guess for me, I would think like one of the first lessons is just look, talking about join and putting together. Right. So I'm thinking you know, I can. keeping it real simple, like right. this is where we're starting. So I'm know. thinking if our first I can statement would be I can put together two groups and tell how many there are all together. Mm -hmm. Even just as simple as realizing that that group got bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. Just because you combined. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to make a note of that. Realize the original group is now larger. And that's exactly on the map screener where mm -hmm. we're having trouble. Is right. That, that cell right there where they're manipulating the objects and reali mm -hmm. not realizing what's happening. Right. And so they're and making that, groups bigger instead of making groups smaller, right. depending on what the question it asks. And so there's that academic the vocabulary that we know they don't exactly. have yet just because they're exactly. not seeing that put together or take mm -hmm. apart aspect of it. So we'll do that. And then, and then I would do probably the Andy addition for the next. And the addition for the next one. Okay, so we're going to introduce put together. Do we want to introduce um, some more vocabulary at the second mini lesson? So maybe well, join. Yeah, add. because I think once you do the <coughs> chart, you're starting to add the Add that vocabulary. Right. That's what I was thinking. It sounds mm -hmm. like, did you mm -hmm. have something to add, Katie? Oh, no, I was oh, okay. saying add. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, and I wonder, like, for some of my higher ones, maybe even that plus sign. I mean... I have some mm -hmm. that are coming in saying, Mrs. Collins, two plus two is, you that's know what I mean? Like, like they're, that's a yeah. so I kind of feel like. That, that's a breakfast conversation. So you know. And the addition, he's holding a plus sign. Mm -hmm. so okay. That would be one that, I, that's like one of the first ones that I would just introduce because that's part of the picture. Of right. The picture. And then talking okay. about what that sign means with the vocabulary. Right, so I'm going to okay. just plug in some of the vocab into the I can statement. So we're going to do plus, mm -hmm. join, we can touch add. on uh -huh. add. Well. add. add. How do you do add at that point? Let's see what else we have. Putting together. Mm -hmm. Putting together. And then I guess for me, like I'm thinking, if I'm putting in the plus sign, then I need to be putting in the e the equal sign. As oh, well. definitely. Just you know. Yeah. Equals. And this is something that we know all of our students won't get the first time, but mm -hmm. we'll be revisiting right. it for the whole month of January. So. I feel like the equal sign they'll be good at because we just did greater than last time and equal to. Yeah, so they're yeah, going to know that. that. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. So that will be good to start with. 